Hi everyone, welcome to this deep learning workshop. In this tutorial, I will introduce the recurrent neural network. Um, new, recurrent neural network uh, is a very popular model to model the sequential input data. Um, the uh, RNN have been used on a wide range of NLP applications, um, such as the language modeling, text classification, and machine translation, also the uh, sequen sequence labeling. Uh, so the RN uh, sequentially process the input sequence, like step by step, and it reuse the uh, weights in the model. So it's the recurrent. So uh, this is a one, uh, illustration of the RN. If we unfold it, you can see each step we give one input, then uh, we get a new updated um, hidden states. Then we send the hidden states uh, to the next step. Then the next steps uh, also get the, uh, uh, the input token of the next step. Uh, and so on. Then we get the final hidden states. Uh, uh, this is the bas basic idea about the RNN. And then in this tutorial, I will uh, train our uh, uh, RNN model for a uh, classification task. Um, I want to use the uh, GPU to train this model. So I uh, upload this notebook to uh, Google Colab. Um, so in Google Colab, we can just select uh, the run uh, time, okay, the change run time, run type to GPU, then just save it. Um, then I uh, test my code with this particular version of Torch. So you can just uh, install this uh, PyTorch and Torch text on Colab. Then uh, next step, we load the data, uh, load the uh, libraries. Uh, we need torch, torch text. Um, then because we want to use GPU, so I set the device equal to uh, GPU, uh, CUDA, CUDA means GPU. And then um, first step, I need prepare the uh, data. So uh, here we have the data. Um, I, I will use the data from the torch text. So um, I just uh, use the same code uh, to load the data from uh, torch text. This is the IMDB task, the binary sentiment classification test. Uh, and uh, you can see uh, more detail. Uh, and uh, we split the data to Train and div. Then uh, we just look at the first example uh, in the training set. So we have a label and the sequence. Uh, this is a movie review. Uh, then when we get the data, we want to build a vocabulary uh, by using the training data. So here we just use the tokenizer method from the uh, touch text. Then we use this uh, basic English uh, tokenizer to tokenize our input. Uh, then we uh, use this uh, build vocabulary method to uh, create the vocabulary for this task. And you can see we um, set some uh, hyperparameters. Here we set the maximum number of token uh, is equal to 10k, 10,000. And we define some special tokens like unknown. If there are any out of vocabulary work, we uh, give the unknown token. And the padding token, we want to pad uh, all the sentences to the same length. So we have a pad token. Then uh, for the label, uh, we have binary classification, so uh, you can say we have uh, positive and negative. 
uh, just convert the, those strings to the index. Then, okay, we can see uh, our vocabulary size is 10K. Um, then uh, we have a method to uh, define a, a tokenizer. So this tokenizer just uh, tokenize the individual sentence uh, to the tokens. Um, yeah, uh, I guess you already know this uh, from previous um, tutorial. Then uh, we define a processor to generate the uh, token, the input sequence, and the uh, labels. Um, so uh, here we predefine a processor. Uh, this is a text processor. So we want to uh, prepare the sequential input, um, which is the uh, movie review. And uh, we define the tokenizer. Uh, it's the uh, default tokenizer. Then uh, we want to convert the uh, string words to the index. So we um, use this vocabulary, our vocabulary, to do this transformation. Uh, then uh, here I define this uh, truncate. So um, we want to chunk the uh, long sequence to uh, this maximum number of lengths. So the, uh, in this case, the maximum number of lengths is 128. Um, uh, if the sentence is more than 128, uh, we just uh, remove the uh, content behind this threshold. Uh, then uh, we have another processor to prepare the labels. Okay. Um, then after this, uh, we get the uh, data. Then we want to uh, create a data loader. Uh, this data loader can help us generate the uh, batches. Um, you can see uh, we uh, define what uh, things uh, in the batches. Uh, so uh, you can see we have the uh, label list and the text list. Uh, so we uh, return the labels and the uh, content, the text. Uh, then we have the train data loader. So the train data loader take the uh, train data as input. Then we set the batch size uh, as equal to 16. Then we should shuffle the data. Uh, and then we use this, uh, this uh, processor uh, method to uh, process the input, say, uh, input samples. And same for the uh, development set. Uh, we give the development data set as input, then we process it. Okay, uh, then now we get the data. So we have the data set. Then we have the um, processor to prepare the data. Uh, then we uh, use the, uh, we now we use the data loader to show you the first example the first batch in the data loader. Um, you can see here we uh, give the, uh, we use this uh, train data loader and just loop through it. Um, we can see the output. So the, this item has two elements. The first one is a tensor uh, with a size of six, 16. So this is a label. We know this is a label list. So our batch size is 16, so we have 16 labels in this batch. The second element is the text. So it's already in the indexes. So um, you can see the first dimension is the number of sequence lengths. 
uh, you know, we uh, set the maximum uh, sequence length is 128. So this is just 128, then the batch size, the 16. Okay, then uh, let's uh, go to the RM. So let's look into the RM model. Um, so, uh, if we want to use the RM to build a model for the text classification, we have, uh, basically we just have three important modules um, in this network. So first we need an embedding layer, then the RM layer, Third one is the classification layer. Mm, let's look at the first layer, the embedding layer. So the embedding layer encodes the each word, uh, the wording vocabulary by a vector. So each word get a vector uh, to represent the string of the word. And here we need to define what the size of the vector. So um, basically we uh, use the number between 100 to 300. Uh, and in our case, we use 300. Uh, here we define the, uh, the, uh, the word the vector size uh, equal to uh, 300. Then um, now we uh, instantiate this embedding layer. So the embedding layer take two uh, arguments as inputs. First one is our the vocabulary size. So how many words in our vocabulary? Uh, then the second number is the embedding layer. What's the vector size? So um, now we instantiate the embedding layer, then we apply this embedding layer on the, the first input batch. Um, we just uh, get the uh, input batch, uh, this item, we already looped through it, the item, so you know, the, se the text sequence is the second element. So we know the, we want to embed the uh, text, so we take the second element, uh, and then it's input and send to this embedding layer. Then the embedding layer gives us the output. Uh, this uh, embedded output uh, is a matrix. Um, the first dimension is a sequence length. The second dimension is a batch size. And the third dimension is the embedding size, uh, which is 300. Okay. Uh, now we get the embedding layer. So the embedding layer gives us output. This uh, encode the individual tokens in a 300 dimensional uh, vector. Then totally we have this uh, matrix for the whole batch. Okay. Um, okay, then we uh, move to the second uh, module which is the recurrent neural network. Uh, here we just uh, implement with uh, the Nina attention, uh, the Nina uh, recurrent neural network. Um, uh, we can just uh, call the method from uh, PyTorch. Uh, this is the torch in the uh, RN. Uh, and the RN, uh, followed by a, a non-linearity function. Uh, well, let's look at the RN. Uh, so here is a single RN layer. We uh, define the hidden states of this RN is 50. Um, then we need to give uh, three input arguments to the RN layer when we instantiate this model or this layer. Uh, the first dimension, the first argument is input size. So, what's the hidden size of the input? Um, you know, the input is uh, in the output from the embedding layer. So, uh, the hidden size is 300. So, the input size is 300. 
And then the hidden size of the RNN, uh, we want to use 50. So we just set uh, it's, it's 50. And then uh, we only use one layer. So we set the number of layer equal to one. Then we get the own layer. Now uh, we should pass the embedded tensor uh, to the RN. So here we um, uh, get to the RN layer, then send this embedded uh, vector, uh, this embedded tensor to the RN. Then the RN will return two outputs. The first is uh, we call our RN output, then the second one is the uh, HN. Let's look at the this output. Um, we want to know what is our output. So we can just print out the dimension of the our output. Uh, let's see. So uh, we can see the first dimension actually is the sequence length. Then the second dimension is the uh, batch size. Then the third dimension is the uh, number of layers. Uh, uh, um, I mean, uh, it's number of the hidden states, number of nodes uh, in the new network. So uh, the output uh, from the RN um, is this uh, sequence length by batch size by the hidden states of the RN. Okay, then uh, let's look at the um, the HN. So the HN uh, is a tensor uh, with size of one by uh, sixteen by fifty. Uh, basically, the uh, HN is a tensor that's contain the hidden states for the last hidden uh, the time step, uh, which means that time step t equal to the sequence length. Um, so uh, as we describe here, so uh, you can see uh, the HN actually just uh, this one, this last hidden state, um, HN. And the R output includes the all the hidden states plus the whole sequence. So the sequence length is the, equal to the maximum sequence length. Um, we have all the hidden states across the output, across the hidden uh, the time steps. So that's the uh, R output and the HN. So now uh, we want to get a representation uh, or summary for the uh, input sequence. Um, so if we want to do the classification, uh, we want to have one uh, representation for the whole sequence. Um, here we can just uh, use the last hidden states to represent the whole sequence, uh, sequence of the input. Uh, just like, okay, we can represent this whole sequence with uh, the last hidden states from the uh, R, because again, because the RN sequentially processes a token. So uh, we think the last hidden states can get the summarization of the whole sequence. Okay, uh, then um, here we just uh, take the last hidden state from the uh, RN output. Um, uh, basically, we can uh, use the uh, HN as well. Um, but here, I, I just show you to uh, extract the last hidden states from the RN. Um, then we show you the uh, hidden size. The text representation size is uh, Batch size by the hidden state size. Um, now it's 16 by 50. Um, then we uh, 
have the value uh, nonlinearity function here. Uh, we instantiate to the activity function, then just apply it uh, to this uh, text output embeddings. Okay, uh, now we get the representation for the sequence. So this is text output uh, embeddings. Then we can use this um, embedding, this text output embedding um, for the classification uh, task. Um, we just uh, have a last classification layer. This is a, a feed forward layer with a softmax uh, activation function. Uh, so this new layer projected the uh, hidden states to the number of classes. Um, so the input dimension is 50. Uh, same as the hidden size. Then, the, uh, because we just have two labels, the label size is two uh, binary classification, so we set the output size is two. Um, then we uh, define this two method uh, first at the linear layer, then followed by the uh, soft max. Uh, we want to um, uh, soft max on the second dimension, which is the class dimension, mm. then we uh, take the uh, X uh, representation uh, tensor, then uh, pass this uh, tensor to the output layer, get a logic, then send the logic to the softmax layer to get the prediction probabilities. Uh, let's look at one sample. Um, uh, so the output, this uh, probabilities, um, is uh, the size is batch size by the number of classes. Um, then we can see the uh, first, the prediction of the first uh, sample. So the first sample um, gets a two output numbers. So uh, they're sum up to one. Uh, this means this sample uh, has 48% uh, probability to get uh, the label of first class. Uh, we know it's the, uh, let's look at the label index. So the label index is positive and negative. So, um, so it's me, 48% this uh, input text is positive class and 51 percent this sample uh, is a, a negative sequence um, then this is output from the rn classification model uh, finally uh, we need calculate the loss so we use the cross entropy loss uh, to calculate the loss for the first batch, um, we just call this method from the PyTorch, then give the uh, probability output and the first batch, uh, then the method will help us calculate the loss. Now, for this first batch, the loss is 0.69. Okay, um, then let's move to the training uh, for the model. We use the whole data set to train the model. Um, here we just uh, we use the uh, training uh, loops and evaluation loops from the ProBus tutorial. Uh, we define the uh, matrix uh, is the accuracy. Um, and then, uh, you can see we just, in the training uh, function, we load the batch, then send the batch to the model, then model get the output, that's the probability uh, prediction, then send to the criterion, and we know it's, uh, it should be the uh, cross entropy loss, then calculate the loss, then uh, we, uh, we use this loss 
to do the back propagation, um, update the weights in the uh, RM model. Um, then this means we train the model. And similar, uh, we evaluate the uh, model with the evaluation data set. And then let's move to uh, the our model uh, class object. Um, here we just uh, put everything together to build the the our model. Um, as we discussed, uh, we have embedding layer, RN layer, uh, the activation function for the RN layer, then the uh, output layers, classification layer. Uh, followed by a software max activation function. So first in the uh, initial method, we define these uh, modules. Then in the forward method, we uh, build the computational graph. So this model just uh, uh, put then these modules sequentially. Um, you can see uh, embedding layer, so we have the input uh send it the input to the embedding layer then followed by an own layer um then we get the last hidden states from the own layer then send to a uh, activation function of the own layer uh then output the layer finally uh we get send the logic to the software max activation function to get the probability output um, okay, then now we already got this uh, RNN class, this object. Uh, then we need instantiate our RNN model. Uh, here we should define some hyperparameters. Uh, and actually, uh, you can play with hyperparameters and find the best hyperparameter uh, for your model. Um, again, uh, we define some uh, random state to help us uh, reproduce the uh, model. And uh, we define number of epoch. We want you to train the model, uh, the learning rate, uh, and uh, number of classes, uh, the vocabulary size, and the hidden size for the RNN layer, and the number of layer. Uh, in the RN module. Okay, um, now we just send those um, hyperparameters to instantiate the uh, RN model. Okay, um, then we should send the model to GPU again because we want to uh, speed up the training. So we uh, use GPU. Uh, then now. Uh, when we get a model, we should send the model to GPU. Now we have the uh, loss function, the cross entropy, then optimizer, we just use the SGD method and this uses a 0.1 uh, learning rate. Now, finally, let's look at our model. Uh, it's just a, uh, very simple as we discussed mm -hmm. uh, there. Uh, several components, embedding layer, on layer, value, activation function, then the output layer, then the source max uh, activation function. Okay, now uh, we can train the model. Um, we have a, a epoch loop here. So uh, we uh, run this model for 30 epochs. Uh, each uh, step, we give the train data loader to the string method, get the uh, loss uh, in each airport. Then we calculate the train accuracy and the validation accuracy. Then finally, um, we just print out the model performance uh, epoch wise. And you can see the train accuracy uh, continuously increase, uh, but uh, the validation seems uh, don't improve a lot. Um, so uh, based, based on this 
uh, performance, uh, I would say, okay, the model uh, is overfitted to the uh, training set. Uh, it gets poor performance on the very different set. Um, so in the future, we will talk about how to uh, normalize this overfitting issue. Uh, now we uh, also show you the training um, output, the training uh, in this uh, this uh, visualization. Mm, and you can see our training loss goes down, and the uh, training accuracy goes up, but the validation accuracy doesn't change a lot. Okay. Uh, finally, I just want to. Uh, briefly introduce some uh, variations of the RM. So uh, those are uh, two models is in the family of RNs. The first is a GRU, it's a gate recurrent neural uh, unit. Uh, so you can uh, see more detail about this um, method. Uh, this can help us handle some long-term dependency issue. Um, and in PyTorch, we can just use this NNGRU uh, to define a GRU layer, then uh, uh, we can uh, uh, see, specify what's the uh, argument, it just as same as the RN layer. Uh, then we get a two output, the output and the HN, uh, it's same to the RN. Uh, you can see they have the same dimension. Now the second uh, one is the long short term uh, memory network. Um, this is uh, uh, another uh, variation of RN. Um, we, uh, in this model, uh, we give the same arguments as the input, um, the input dimension, you know, the uh, embedding size, then the uh, hidden size uh, and number of layer. Uh, but one different is the output. So the ASTM um, output the uh, three things. So the output, uh, you know, it's the uh, sequence of the hidden states. Um, so the size is 108. Um, then uh, batch, uh, the output size is 108 by batch size by the hidden states size. Um, the same the output, but the second one is the HN. Uh, similarly, the HN is the hidden size, the last uh, hidden states uh, in the batch. Um, and the third one is a cell state. Um, so uh, the LSTM has one special uh, state, which called um, cell state. So same, the LSTM help us to handle the uh, memory forgetting issue and capture the long uh, term dependencies. Um, this cell states is just a one additional output from the AS10. Um, and um, the AS10, we can uh, uh, just uh, use any of those to get the text uh, representation uh, for the classification task. Um, OK, yeah, that's all about our uh, tutorial about uh, the RN network. Uh, and hope you enjoy this tutorial. And uh, please let us know if you have any questions. Uh, thank you so much.